if you were if you were here, I think back in maybe 2022, 2021, I gave a presentation that went through the history of the common data model, but it, it stopped at 2020. So I thought it'd be really nice to update that timeline and share with you what we've done, where, you know, where we've gone, and then give you a little bit of a background of the CDM working group and some of those lessons we've learned over the years and how that is translated into um, our processes and the ways that we work. So Back in 2009, um, the Observational Medical Outcomes Partnership uh, was formed, and this was version one of the common data model. And as it progressed, as this, um, as this experiment and this group progressed, um, they went through a couple different versions, but again, we don't talk about version three. Um, also, I think maybe the uh, multipliers of three are just bad luck for us. I'm not really sure why. Um, but we ended in 2014 with CDM version 5.0. And this was really the first kind of iteration of the CDM as we know it. You know, for a while, a couple people stayed on version 4.5, but really version 5.0 was that first big, um, big statement as the Odyssey community. And it stayed around for quite a while, for about two years. And then we began in 2016, making quite a few changes to the CDM. We had a backlog of issues of things people had denoted saying, hey, I think this, you know, I think we could change this here, or, you know, this is missing. Can we update this? And so you'll see starting in 2016, we really made a lot of changes. Um, we went quickly from version 5.0 to version 5.2 in 2017. And at this point, this was our documentation. So I went in the way, way back machine um, and I was able to get an image of our Odyssey Wiki. So if you guys were around at that time, you might remember this. Um, but I want to point you to the documentation on the little on the navigation bar and how lovely it is that says person version 5.1 and up note NLP version 5.2. It was it was pretty messy and we didn't have a great way to keep track of our versions as we were making these changes to the CDM. So it became very confusing and very difficult to follow. Uh, so we ended up moving over to a GitHub Wiki. And at this point, this was, this was a, a big upgrade. Um, it was really helpful. You'll see we did this in 2017. At that point, we were somewhere between 5.1 and 5.2. Um, and this was really helpful because we could create this documentation on GitHub. And that was the first time we really had a way to track our changes. Now, I'm gonna to get to the downsides of this, but th there were some downsides to using a GitHub Wiki if you guys have ever used one before. But then in 2018, we were, we were using the GitHub Wiki and it was working well for us and we released version 5.3. Um, and this was a very stable version. You know, we learned a little bit from 2016 through 2017 that those very quick rapid changes to the CDM are helpful for us in the CDM working group, but not great for the community, um, especially as we saw the advent of Eden and some of these really large federated networks relying on the OMOP common data model. The faster we made changes, the harder it was for our software developers to keep up and the harder it was for these large federated networks to keep up. And at that point, what we realized too is as these networks, networks were coming on board, we needed a way to better categorize our CDM conventions. So you'll see here is around 2017, 2018, we started adding documentation around our Themis issues. And this was still on our, our Odyssey GitHub Wiki. Um, we were trying to identify these issue numbers, um, but it, it still wasn't great. We weren't, at, we weren't at the final form yet, 
but we were trying. We were trying to help answer a lot of these questions that were coming from our growing community around how do we map our data consistently to the CDM? How do we standardize that? And then we figured out, well, the wiki was great, but we need to cut ties because uh, what was happening as we had so many more collaborators join, there was actually, um, the wiki was open to anyone who wanted to make a change. So I was finding I was often having to go back and revert changes that were made by um, so, you know, some well-meaning community members, but that were reverting some of the things we had done or decided on. And so we decided, you know, we really need a full website that if you search, if you Google search the OMOP common data model, it will come up. And so that's what we did here. Um, that's how we created our Odyssey GitHub IO page. Um, and that was around 2022 or so. And we took a really, that whole year to really overhaul our entire documentation. Um, and that was like really the first time we came together as a community to do that. Um, we created all of our user guides, our CDM conventions. That's really when we got our, our website as you see it today. And then once we did that, the next year we uh, created CDM version 5.4, um, implementing a new process where we really included the entire community. No more was it the CDM working group making changes in a vacuum. Um, we really went to all of the interested parties, all of the working groups that should have a say. We got their sign off. We did a lot of legwork knocking on doors and we came to this really nice stable version where we are now, CDM version 5.4. And if you'll, if you remember, we did a, um, an ERD challenge, an entity relationship diagram challenge. And this was the winner. Uh, Martine Shumi and Renskalos came up with this really lovely, really, um, nicely printed version of our CDM 5.4 as it exists now. That was in 2022. Um, and so I felt it was really important this year we add our Themis repository to our timeline of CDM events and in 2024. So now we're again coming together as a community, building out this repository, um, working together, you know, to make a resource that is going to really help hopefully um, make the way we convert the our data to the CDM much better. All right, so with that, you're probably still saying to yourself, well, that's great, but you, you talked about different versions of the CDM. What does that actually mean and what does that look like? And as I mentioned, over the years going from Starting in 2009, um, you know, coming to the beginning of Odyssey through now, we've really learned a lot about how to work in such a large community um, in curating a resource that is extremely important and really is, in Lego speak, is the base plate. Um, the CDM is the base plate of our Lego build, and it's really, really important that we get it right. All right, so with that, I'm going to share with you what we mean by CDM additions and how we have um, changed this process over the years for the better. I, I, do, I do like Lego. Um, just as a note, I recently got the Medieval Village. It goes with the castle from a couple years ago and it comes with a goat, I'm just saying. Comes, the Lego animals are 100% um, my favorite. So. Well, what I wanted to do first, you know, we get this question a lot about how do I make changes to the CDM? And this is typically an open question when someone new comes to the community and they say, hey, you know, I'm really trying to map my data to the CDM, but I got this stuff that doesn't fit and it's just not, it's not working. What do I do? And a couple of years ago, we came up with this, this hierarchy of CDM additions, um, and we did this as part of the, the CDM working group, and I realized a couple weeks ago, I never actually put this on the website. So I've been talking about site-specific add-ons and expansions, and I don't think it was clear what we meant. So first thing I wanna note is 
uh, a lot of questions we get around are around things that are specific to your data. Um, oftentimes, these are things like privacy flags, um, different. Sometimes you might have identifiers either for your person um, or for your encounters or things that are specific to the administration of your database. Um, I want to put it out now. It is entirely within your right as a CDM holder to add any columns um, or fields you might need for the proper administration of your data. Really what you need to make sure of is that you know, you're not altering the tables, uh, excuse me, the fields as they currently exist in the tables. But if you need to add a field, that is 100% okay and really um, encouraged if you need that to help make your CDM valuable to your institution. So if there's something um, that you're just saying, you know, I really need this value, um, you know, we've, we've heard different things over the years, but it is totally within the realm of possibility and your right to do that. If you add a column to person, say, you know, say you need, um, I think, you know, there, say you have a requisition number or something like that, and you need to add it to the person table, that is totally fine. Um, all the standard tools and methods will still work. Um, if you add a new column, you don't need to worry about that. Um, and the, D, the DQD or the data quality dashboard, if you run it on that table with that additional column, it's not going to cause any problems for you. Uh, so really encourage you, you know, a lot of times this helps just to make a CDM instance more valuable to you and your institution. That's totally fine. Um, the one thing we say is, you know, do not expect that field to be uh, used in network research. It's really only there to support you and your needs as you administer your data. Um, now, this link here, and I'll put some links in the chat, um, does link out to a poster very helpfully put together by Melanie, where she really goes in depth about how to do this um, and some different examples. All right, so then the next level down uh, from a site-specific add-on is what we call expansions or extensions. And this falls really nicely in line with what Andrew was just chatting about. So he brought up um the medical imaging uh expansion um i do have a link here to their paper that they just put out and andrew was talking about the use of that expansion in the bridge to ai um in that i'm going to probably use the wrong word um but in that group in that grant in that initiative they are using this expansion um and so this is kind of the next level up where Typically, expansions are sets of tables created by working groups that follow the guidelines and general conventions of the OMOP CDM, but they do not fall under the purview of the CDM working group. So the way I think about this is we have the canonical CDM, um, and then we have expansions and extensions. The expansions and extensions work with the canonical CDM, but they are not managed by the CDM working group. The only tables and fields that are managed by the CDM working group are those that you will find when you uh, look at our documentation on our website. So all the ones here that are labeled CDM version 5.4, and any of these other CDM versions, those are the ones that we that we handle um, as the community, you know, as a community resource. Now these are still community resources, but they move they they can move much more quickly. So if they need to make changes as they learn about how to work, say work better with um, waveform data, they can quickly make those changes to the medical imaging expansion, and they don't have to wait for the machine of the CDM working group to, to you know, to turn on and get moving, um, because we are trying very hard to keep the CDM as stable as possible. So there's a really good examples here. Um, the oncology working group has done a lot of work, um, the medical imaging, like I mentioned, and as well as the GIS working group. So there's a lot of information here. Um, what we like to suggest, and I think Melanie is going to talk a little bit more about this, is before you go the route of expansion or extension, just come talk to us in Themis or in the CDM working group to make sure that your 
need can't be solved by a vocabulary um, or a new convention because it's so much easier to solve your need with vocab or in a themis convention because then you're not having to create the tables on your own and and kind of do that whole build from the ground up. Um, rather, you can kind of just put your data in using some new concepts. And a lot of times that's really the answer. So before you go that route, I would just caution, just come talk to us, ask us. Um, we've helped quite a few groups in the past and we've helped point them in the right direction of the best way to model their data in the CDM. All right, so the last one would then be a change to the canonical CDM. Um, I will put out these change requests must be backed by network use cases and they must be approved by the CDM working group. Uh, we do have a full process here. It is on our website. So under CDM additions, it's this link here, how to propose changes to the CDM. Now we've come to this five-step process over the course of many years. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, um, but you can see them here. Um, I'm going to go back one page because I will note um, there are some really good examples recently. So for example, the NLP working group has done a whole lot of work to update a couple fields in the note and note NLP tables. And they did a fantastic job. They even did a whole network study prior to asking for final approval. They were really on their game. They came, you know, they worked through all the different changes and options. And they said to us, you know what? We've done this study with these uh, interested parties. We have a use case. We've had them map their data using the, you know, these edited fields. Here's what we learned, and here's our final result. Um, they did a really great job. We approved it in the CDM working group, and now what's going to happen is their new edit to the NLP table, which is very small. Um, that is actually going to be part of a development version of the CDM. So we're really trying hard to make sure we push a development version first. We are not talking about a new version of the CDM just yet, but we're, we are looking at our development version so we can make sure we are communicating with you and our software developers and everyone else in the community who needs to know what's going to be going on um, prior to releasing a new version. So we are not doing that yet but our development version does help us uh, on, on our way to that new version. The next one I want to point out is um, Oleg and Sasha and the vocab team have advocated for a new column called value source concept ID. Again, they did a really great job uh, presenting to us what they've learned. They have interested stakeholders. Um, they've also done some work across a network of databases, and they had a very nice, well thought out, well researched proposal for us. And so I've linked you to their presentation if you want to see it. Um, but again, we we really try to focus on an, any vocab you might need uh, before considering a change to the CDM, any conventions. Um, and if that doesn't work, thinking about an expansion or extension. We want to keep changes to the canonical CDM as, you know, the final, you know, step. Um, because it is so important to make sure we have a stable version of the CDM for the entire community. All right, so that's really what I wanted to go over with you guys. Um, now we've talked a little bit about the CDM, you know, really what these processes are, what we do in the CDM working group. Like I mentioned, if you have questions or concerns about how to get your data into the CDM properly, sometimes it becomes a FEMIS convention, and it's really about documenting how that data should be mapped to the CDM. So I'm going to switch it over to Melanie, and she's going to go through what that process looks like. All right. Thank you, Claire. Um, let me share my screen. You all can see my FEMIS working group presentation. We see the slides are not in. Uh... Perfect. Presenter mode. There you go. All right. OK, um, let's see. Minimize, not minimizing. OK, so Themis Working Group. Um, 
I lead this. This has been, we collaborate a lot with the CDM working group, which Claire leads. Why is my slides not moving forward? Here we go. Um, so what is Themis? Themis is a working group that provides conventions on how this source data should be standardized to the OMOP CDM when there's any type of ambiguity of how you should ETL or insert that data in. And we follow the FAIR principles. Um, we want to make sure that it's findable and accessible. Those were two um, of the motivators for the April Olympian um, collabathon that we've been doing this past past month is that these conventions were spread all over. Um, so we wanted to put them all into this convention library that Claire showed you, and I'm going to show you a little bit more of here in a minute. Um, so how do we do this? Um, Themis working group. So first, if you have a question about how these data should be inserted into the Themis uh, convention library, we also call it the Themis repository. Um, First, you're going to take a look and you're going to search through that uh, convention library and we're, I'm going to show you that in a minute. Then we're going to create um, if that is if there's not a convention there already, then create an issue in the Themis GitHub. We have a template for you and you become the owner of that issue and uh, you take it through the whole Themis process. So let me just um, open up and give you a little bit of a uh, tour of the Themis. Here it is. This is the Themis Convention Library, also known as the repository. This first page here has a summary about the Themis uh, working group. It introduces you, um, tells you what falls under Themis and what does not. So sometimes you have a, a question and would that go to the CDM work group or would it go to the vocabulary work group or where would it go to the Themis working group? So we have that outlined here. Um, Along with a topic process, this is how we process all the issues that people put into um, the Themis GitHub, and we have a little bit of information. So the first step is, is you search through the convention library to see if there's a convention about um, inserting, let's say, gender. So you can search up here, gender, you see that, oh, there's two different conventions on um, gender in the OMOP CDM. Or if you know specifically what table um, this data is located in, you could also go to the person table, knowing that uh, gender is um, a, also a convention on gender here. And then we have our tag browser. Right now we just have dates. This whole website right here is a work in progress. This is part of our April Olympians collabathon. So right now we have um, one tag just for dates, but we are continuing to build this out. Up at the top, we have links over to the Themis GitHub, um, CDM, CDM documentation, and also data quality documentation. So you may come to Themis from multiple different places. You could be looking through the CDM documentation um, about different things, and you see that you know drug end date is required, and that would link you um, right on over here to the Themis conventions. It'll tell you how to populate that when you don't have that in your source data. Or maybe you have populated your OMOP CDM and you're finding that you have some failures on your data quality dashboard. And so you may come at it from your data quality dashboard point of view, and that will link you back out here. So we can open that up and this will tell you um, data quality dashboard um, and all the thousands of checks that are featured in the data quality dashboard. So there's maybe two different ways that you get here to the Themis um, convention library. So if you don't find what you're looking for in the Themis convention library, you can toggle over to the Themis GitHub um, and you can create an issue. So you just click on issues. You say you have a new issue right here, get started. And we have a template for you to fill it out has all the attributes you need. It has the name, the type of issue, a description, any related posts you found about it on the OMOP CDM are captured here. Um, so you just fill it out and then you submit it. And then once you submit it, it's gonna go through this process. Um, and here's the topic, um, how we process each of the topics or issues. This is a diagram. Um, and then this is also going to be physically part of our project board. 
right now we're using utilizing our project board for the April Olympians collabathon. Um, and once that finishes up at the end of April and May, we are going to switch it over um, to have all the different lanes, um, very similar Kanban board, all the different lanes as this issue moves through the themis process. So first things first is you nominate it by filling it out and creating an issue with using that template. Um, and then we're going to have you go to the Odyssey forums to get input from the community. Um, Sometimes I'll, I'll ask you to tag specific people uh, because I know they may have a similar use case to your use case. And so we want to do this as a community effort. Uh, we make Themis uh, makes conventions that are for the good of the whole community. And we want to make sure we have everybody's different input. So that way it's just not very, it's not specific to one type of data or one specific use case. Um, once we've gathered all that feedback, we're going to add that issue to our agenda. Um, and then once it's prioritized, it'll go to the Themis work group. And then we're going to have a discussion about that um, and any feedback that we got from the community on the forums or any other community members. And then from there, uh, it's either ratified as a convention. We may or may not modify it a little bit, depending on. Um, on the issue. Um, and if it is ratified, then we put it into our documentation, which is the Themis repository I just showed you. Um, occasionally, the convention is rejected. Um, we'll give you an explanation. Maybe you want to have you know, two records for one person in the person table. It's not allowed because you can't do longitudinal research if there's two separate person records. That would be uh, you know, something that may be rejected. Or sometimes it may require a little bit more context, documentation, or a little bit more work within the community. Um, and we will give you that feedback and guidance on how to do that. So uh, a few different steps, pretty straightforward, and we will handle all of that uh, for you. There's a little bit more explanation um, for each of these steps down here. And then, of course, we have our issue tracker and our um, uh, GitHub and the Odyssey forum links are down here. Um, so Themis, let me see, where'd my slides go? All right. So work group work. We utilize that project board uh, to keep track of all of our issues and as they're moving through uh, the process. So if at any time you have a question, about a certain convention or where it is in that process. It'll be on the project board that we're utilizing now. Um, and it's very efficient and organized, and I'm very happy with all the work that we've done with the April Olympians. Um, and this is really great for the community. Um, as the work group lead, I'm here to serve you. So I am going to help answer any questions that you have during any step of the Themis process. I'm going to ensure the issues are tracking through that project board and keep the issues organized. I'm going to schedule the meetings, the clavathons, or any other events that are needed to accomplish our mission and ensure that the community members that we need for these discussions are present at these meetings. We are open working group. We're open to all. We would love for you to join us. And all our documentation is in MS Teams and on our GitHub also has a lot of information. We meet the first and third Thursday of every month at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. So when the U.S. changes time zone from daylight savings to standard, we're still meeting at 10.30 a.m. Um, and there's a QR code right there if you want to scan it and jump back out to um, Themis on MS Teams. And that's all I have for now. I'd like to open it up to any questions folks might have. Thank you, uh, Claire and Melanie. As as Melanie mentioned, uh, we have ten minutes. So, if there are questions about either the CDM or the Themis workgroup processes, April Olympians, anything, uh, this would be a great time. So, please uh, raise your hand. Uh, Patrick. 
Oh, yeah, I was going to make a, a comment, but I'd also welcome uh, Claire and Melanie's feedback about if they've got recommendations for the community. There's been several nice pieces of work coming out of the community as it relates to CDM extensions, and folks have been making good progress in not only creating proposed extensions, but implementing them and running tests and even going so far as to uh, aim to publish those extensions. One aspect of uh, um, inconsistency that I've observed in all of that work, though, is how people have been describing what they are doing as it relates to an extension uh, in the use of the OMOP common data model. I've, I've seen, for example, some, some works where people have just renamed it, so it's not the OMOP common data model, but it's whatever their project's common data model, where it's the use of the OMOP CDM plus some other tables they've added. Um, it does seem to me we're, we're actively trying to promote people to, to innovate and come up with these new solutions, but I don't know if, Claire and Melanie, you have some recommendations of how you would encourage folks to create those extensions and communicate them about whether or not the aim is to align with and coordinate with the community or whether they're aiming to be a fork in a in a uh, in an alternative of the OMOP CDM. If you have got any suggestions for how folks should try to carry that forward. Yeah, that's that's a really good question. Um, one of the challenges I have found with extensions um, is that I, I am certain just as we are as unaware of the number of people around the world who are using the OMOP CDM, I am certain we are unaware of the total universe of extensions. Um, one thing I, I typically like to tell extension or expansion owners that that word is used kind of interchangeably um, is that if I, I want to create some way to endorse the extension ex expansions or extensions as a community. Um, and so one way I've thought about endorsing them, and this actually came up, um, there is a recent work um, in collaboration with Oleg and some and groups looking at ECHLS data, which is extracorporeal life support. Um, they filled a whole suite of tables to model this ECHLS data because they need very specific information on like the model number of parts that are being used in the machines. Now, when we think about general network research, we probably don't need that level of detail. But what, what we suggested to them in the working group is that when you identify someone is being put on an Eccles machine and they have this, it's typically a, like an intubation procedure or some an additional procedures that are happening to the person as they are being you know, hooked up to this machine, the suggestion was make sure you're writing a record back to the procedure occurrence table or one of these canonical tables, even if you're gonna house most of this information in your extension or expansion. And the reason I like to think of it that way is because if you, if you make that suggestion as you are using these expansion tables, that means that you can still use your your canonical CDM tables to support network research because it is still modeling those high level procedures or high level say conditions um, that are being observed it, it, you know, in the standard tables, but then you can also perform additional detailed research should you need to using your expansion or extension tables. So when I think of some some of those tables that are endorsed by the CDM, that's that's what I like to see personally, is an interchange of information. So you're not you're not just solely keeping it in your expansion or extension, but you're pulling over what you can into the canonical tables. Um, and then what I really like what the Eccles team did, and I know I've talked with Paul in the medical imaging group, um, is they've asked us to, um, you know, look over what they've done and give suggestions. And so that's what we've done. Uh, so that's that's really what I like to see, like that Eccles team and I know medical imaging as well, have really worked on updating vocabularies as well. Um, and then I see a couple of hands up. So the one last thing I'll say is the next question is around um, network use. So thinking about expansions and extensions, they certainly can be used in network research. I think we're seeing that with Bridge to AI. Um, but you have to make sure that all of the databases you are 
incorporating in your network study are populating those tables. So we've thought about potentially trying to use either the metadata table or even the CDM source table to identify which expansions or extensions a a CDM instance is utilizing. But I think that's a little bit down the line because I don't think we have a good process yet for um, you know for endorsing them. But we're we're getting there. Uh, Christoph. I think for this great work, it's it's great how things are being organized and 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 I had kind of a, a related question. I you know I, and wondering you know how you guys have thought about this or what we're doing. There's a there's a I perceive there's kind of an unbounded growth of issues. And and um, you know you don't have infinite capacity. I think the capacity for people to find issues and say, hey, let's do this way outstrips resources. And yet in the that continuous flow of more and more stuff, I think what, you know, and I saw you had a Trello board or something like that, and there's what you're doing now, but, but how do you kind of clean that out over time so it doesn't become such a, uh, you know, like how do we get to closure or moving things into some parking lot labeling of issues. How do you think about 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 that and the priorities of these issues, knowing limited resources? Yeah, um, that, that's a good question. So typically what I do um, is I tend to I tend to deprioritize something where someone's saying we need three new tables in the CDM and I'm immediately like, hold on a minute. Um, I'm not sure that that's I, I don't know that we can really push the community in that direction. Um, not to say that's not a valid, you know, suggestion, but it's, I tend to push it back to the person and say, you need to do a little bit more here. That's kind of why we it put together that CDM um, request process because of some of the half-baked ideas we were getting. And so we're really starting to see things um, really mature over time as people go through that process and really think through, well, do we need this additional table or, you know, do we need these other fields? Um, and we've actually found largely no, um, that the canonical CDM as it exists addresses, I would say, probably 90 to 95 percent of the use cases we see um, coming through the community. Um, and then apart from that, what I typically do, and, and I don't know if Melanie does this, but I'll take time um, every six months or so, and I'll go through and I'll read back through a lot of the issues I have in the CDM uh, GitHub and close ones that I feel like, you know, this we've really moved past this now, and I put a note to the person. Um, the other thing we've discussed and Andy, Andy brought this up to Andy Cantor, is that I think the hard part we have is forums are forever. Um, and they, they never, a lot of times they don't reach resolution. Um, so what we'd like to do is take our answers we've come up with in the, in the Themis repository and actually respond back to forum posts. And I don't know if there's a way, but I'd love to pin like the Themis answer to the top page of a themis post of a forum post um because i think that's that's one of the hard parts of these perpetual issues is because people find questions from like 20 you know 2015 or so that we've largely answered but it never got back to the forum andrew so with respect to that last point you were making, we're doing something in Bridge to AI that might be useful where we periodically go through all discussions and have a, a separate tag for something that's a discussion versus something that is an answer. And when there's an answer, there's a sort of a canonical way of linking to the relevant discussions and summarizing the information and, and people can search for those. Uh, but broadly with respect to Patrick's original question, I wonder if there's a useful distinction between <clears throat> the branding that people might feel obligated to do for whatever, let's say there's a, a government or other institutional need to do something that has a particular stamp on it versus its compatibility with the ecosystem. Those seem like distinct things. Like you could be fully compatible, but call it something different. And there might be an urgent need to have it have a particular name. And so I, I guess there's a, yeah, I just want to say, I think those might be distinct issues and that we were sort of talking about them as if they were the same thing in a way. Uh, so we might have a, a community uh, 
I don't know, decision about whether it's okay to rebrand stuff that's really kind of more broadly Odyssey or, or give it a particular stamp uh, as if it were a fork when it's not really a fork um, and versus ensuring compatibility and non-rule breaking kind of things. Mm -hmm. uh, I know we're past 12. If Claire and Melanie, if you have moments, uh, we have yeah. one more question for from Christian. No, 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 it's 12. That's, uh, I was just I was just trying to mention the uh, shed light on the fact that this is not clean and we have to balance all the time at the, the various things, which is the dynamics of the um, community, the lack of resource, the lack of attention, uh, the data, all these things come together. So this is not something which like is a um, an act of Congress and you have perfection here. Well, maybe you don't even have that in the Congress actually, but um, that, that's what I wanted to say. So people have to be, have to contribute, have to come in, have to be patient and have to have understanding that, you know, this is the, it is going to be for a long time um, work in progress. That's all. Thank you, and thanks for the two to actually take it on and do it with a vengeance. It's just wonderful to see that. <laughs>